Welcome to the second round of the Engate series. This is the Hunter Jumper session. This session is presented by Deanna Phelan, owner of Gary Hill Stables. Deanna is a show jumping competitor, a high performance jumper coach, recorded course designer for Hunter and Jumper with Equestrian Canada, the reserve champion for the 2005 National Jumper Talent Squad, and show jumping analyst for CBC Sports. In this presentation, we will be looking at the difference between riding a hunter horse versus a jumper. We will begin by defining a hunter horse and then look at a hunter course. The origin of the show ring hunter can be found in the sport of fox hunting, where horses and riders galloped over miles of countryside, jumping natural obstacles like hedges and stone walls. Now, under the conduct of a hunter class, all hunters are judged on their jumping style and way of going. A performance starts when the horse enters the ring and ends when he leaves. In all hunter classes except miscellaneous, horses and ponies must be jogged for soundness. Juniors must wear safety-approved headgear while jogging for soundness. All horses and ponies showing in junior classes must be jogged by a junior. Circling a horse once upon entering the ring and once after competing the course is permissible, but any other circling except to retake offense in the case of a run out or refusal shall be counted as a disobedience. After you've done your two or three over fence classes, it's the, the division is generally finished with an under saddle class where all the horses come into the ring and are shown at a walk, trot and canter both ways of the ring and at least eight horses at the judge's discretion may be required to gallop one way in the ring. Expert horsemen judge hunters subjectively on the basis of their style and movement, confirmation and overall picture. Judges observe how the horse moves and jumps. They watch their attitude, the shape of their jump, striding, everything, it's all about the horse. Now let's look at some of these hunter horses. Now let's look at some of these hunter horses. This horse, hunter horse depicts great form. Look at the front knees, how even they are and how they're uh, jacked up under the horse's throat latch almost. The ears are pricked forward and he's using his head and neck out and down, using and encouraging the bascule shape, which we want the hunter horse to have in the air. This pony hunter jumping a vertical, what a lovely expression, knees up to his throat latch again, beautiful head and neck, and a great expression. Once we do the two or three over fences classes, it is then followed up with the hunter under saddle. This horse is demonstrating lovely movement at the trot. This is what the judge will be looking for. Now, the only thing this horse would not have on in an under saddle class, you would have to remove the standing martingale in order to go in the under saddle. But the length of rein and the length of neck and the stride is covering ground. It's a beautiful expression and movement uh, of how a hunter under saddle should be. Followed up by our pony hunter under saddle. This beautiful gray pony, the expression, look at the, uh, the front leg just striding out in front. This is what's being judged in the hunter under saddle class. Now, once we do the two over fences and the under saddle, the horses have to come back for the over fences to be jogged for soundness. So the rider will be jogging the horse in, in full attire, and the horse needs to be jogged in, in bridle. The saddle must be removed, and the judge will be looking at the horse's soundness, and the horses trot basically in the order that he would like to place them in. As well as our ponies. Remember, our ponies and juniors must be jogged back in hand with a junior rider, and again, everyone must be wearing a safety-approved helmet for the jog in as well. Now there are some um, hunter classes that are actual confirmation model hunters and this is where the horses must come back in for jogging for soundness but the actual judge will come out of their booth and actually inspect each horse 
for confirmation before giving them their um, final placings. Now we'll move on to the hunter courses. Jumps shall stimulate obstacles found in the hunting field, such as post and rail, stone walls, chicken coops, hedges. All jumps shall have wings or be of sufficient width to stimulate obstacles in the hunting field. A horse shall be able to knock down the top element of hunter fences, solid coops or walls without blocks or poles are not allowed. Horses shall be shown over a minimum of eight fences in recognized classes and no fewer than seven fences in miscellaneous classes. The course shall and must have at least one change of direction, and at least 75% of the course must be at the required height. Courses must be posted 30 minutes prior to the start of the class. Course designers must provide distances of lines and combinations and steel pins and cups are not acceptable. Now we must use the plastic cups and pins in the hunter division or the keyhole system breakaway is also allowed. Now walking a course in a normal hunter round is not allowed, but if you are entering a specific special hunter class like a classic, the hunter classic, or a hunter derby, then the riders are allowed to walk the course before the class starts. Now let's take a look at an actual hunter round or a hunter course. I'll ask you to look to see where the in gate is, top left hand corner. We're going to start this course. All hunter rounds normally start towards home or towards the in gate. It starts with a vertical. We're going to start on the left lead and then we're going to go across the diagonal to two, three. We're going to go down the outside, four, five, across the diagonal to the single jump, and then we're going to finish on the way home on jump seven to eight. Now, all the jumps would be vertical to oxer in the lines. That's also a requirement. This would be hunter number one course. And can you find the hunter number two course, which would technically start on the right lead quarter line, and then we would go across the diagonal to the single jump, we would go, then go down the outside and we would come across the diagonal line and we would then finish on the line in front of the judge's booth. So normally your course one and two are posted at the same time and there is basically, they say only about eight ways to do a hunter course. So here are two and they're both starting towards home. Normally the left lead is first and your round two would start on the right lead. Now let's look at another hunter course. And here we um, have it um, with the actual dimensions um, footage of what the course designer is using. So locate your in gate, which now is in the bottom right hand corner. And we're going to start on the left lead. The vertical on the quarter line is jump number one. And then we're going to go across the diagonal to the single ox or at number two. We're going to come down the outside line towards the in gate out gate. That's jump three, four vertical oxer. We're then going to go across the diagonal, jump five, six, vertical oxer, and we finish going towards home on jump seven and eight. Now, this course designer has also provided the measurements. If you're a small pony, a medium pony, a large pony, if you're jumping the three foot hunter course or the three foot six. So take a look at jump three to four. And for a three foot course, which would be horse distances, the, the footage is 74 74 feet 6 inches. So that would be the measurements you would know what kind of striding is used to use to take that line. And that's what the judge is looking for. That if that is a five stride line, you must do it in five, not four, not six, six. So they've required the measurements to be posted and you the rider must do the course or you will be penalized if you don't get the right striding in the lines. So that leads us to the next slide, horse distances used on course. As a rider, you need to familiarize yourself with what is a four stride line. It could be anywhere from 57 feet to 60 to 65, depending if you're riding indoors or outside. So when that course designer used 74 six, then we know they're probably using somewhere in the five stride, which is 72 feet up to almost 78 feet. So as a rider, you need to familiarize yourself with those numbers. And when you look at the course, you'll know what is a four stride, what is a five stride. So that's very valuable information. 
So we've got the course map, we've got the distances, and now we're going to look at some hunter style jumps. What we're seeing here is a hunter vertical. Very well constructed, looks solid, all filled in, not airy at all. Has wide standards that holds the jump up. We've got a pole on top of a gate. In front of the gate we have a box. In front of the box we have a flower box. It's almost built a little bit like a triple bar. There's lots of filler. Something that's really going to encourage the horse to look at what he's jumping and use that bascule shape in the air. Remember those first couple of pictures we showed you? The horse was, its head was down, it's, it was arching its neck, and that's going to give the, the horse good jumping form and style, something that the judge can also be judging. You can see on this standard that they're not using plastic cups and pins, they're actually using the keyhole system that's for safety. Everything will come down or break if a horse ever got hung up over the jump. So that is a great picture of a hunter style jump. Followed by a hunter style oxer. We have a pole in front and a pole in back which makes it an oxer. Under the pole is a gate and again we have the box, we have a flower box and we also have some green cedar brush. So the jump really wants to be filled in. Give the horse something substantial to be jumping beautiful style jumps. The actual divisions for hunters, as you can see here, are anything from a small pony of two foot three up to a regular open hunter of four foot. And again, remember these divisions normally have two to three over fences and one under saddle. Now many provinces have also designed their own miscellaneous hunter classes and we have that here in New Brunswick. We have a intro hunter, which is like cross rail. We have beginner hunter, something that's two foot three. So we provinces will design their own miscellaneous hunter divisions to fit the need of the beginner horse and rider. They follow the same rules as far as judging. The main difference is that they are not required to jog for soundness. Now, following that, we're going to look at a hunter style judge's card. So this is what the judge is using. So the column on the left hand side is the actual horse's number. When it enters the ring, they have uh, horse number 86. The top left, sorry, the top of the sh uh, card, we have fences one to eight and it's closest to her or the outside line. She's also put the striding. You can see the number two to three is a six stride. Number four to five is a five stride. Keep going over towards the right and each hunter is judged out of a hundred percent. Uh, this horse has got a, a, a score of 69 and then their comments, it's probably B for a bay horse and it looks like a pelham. It probably has a pelham in it. So if you, and then the top right hand corner is placings first uh, down the line. That's how she'll ask them to jog in to see if that order will stand for the placings. The judge's card, um, that, that, that judge should be able to tell you, mind you, you're not allowed to go over and speak to a judge. You must go to the steward first and if you have a question about your round, the steward will ask the judge if they will um, allow you to come over and speak with them. If they do, the judge will be able to say, okay, what was your number? Okay, and they'll be able to go to their judge's card and actually talk you through what they saw over each jump. This is the actual symbols. So a judge will basically have their own symbols to use on their own judge's card uh, in case a horse is hanging a leg or it swaps leads or it uh, chips in, uh, drifts to the right. These are all the symbols that a good judge will get their own paperwork and their own um, system so that they can be able to recap at any time what that round was like and how it should be scored. So we would like now to introduce you to a video of showing a children's hunter. Number 36.
Canadian team rider Tiffany Foster will lead us off into the jumper ring. Now, faults for jumpers. First, disobedience is four penalty points. Obstacles knocked down while jumping, four penalties. Fall of horse or rider or both in all competitions is elimination. Second, disobedience is elimination. Exceeding the time limit is elimination. Exceeding the time allowed in the first and second rounds and jump offs, not against the clock, is one penalty for every four seconds commenced. Exceeding the time allowed in a jump off against the clock is one penalty for each second or commenced fraction of a second. Now, the conduct of a jumper class is as follows. Judging is entirely objective based on faults incurred for refusals, runouts, rails down, falls, and seconds over the optimum time. In the jumper round, the fastest clean round always wins, regardless of style. Jumpers require horses that are good, if not better, hunter horses, and riders at least equally sophisticated as hunter riders, as the top levels of either sport is an artistry that prevails. Jumper jumps have a red and white flag to show direction, and each jump is numbered. There's also a start and finish line, and rounds are assigned a time allowed. The judge will blow a whistle or sound a bell to give a signal to start and activate a 45 seconds countdown. The 45 second countdown sets the time that the athlete can spare before commencing its round. If a refusal takes place, in a triple or double combination, the entire combination has to be taken again. If a horse stops and the jump falls down, the judge will blow the whistle for the jump to be rebuilt. Six seconds will be added to the rider's end time for rebuilding the jump after the refusal. Now let's move into the jumper courses. We'll look at this first uh, style of fence. It's a, it's a jumper oxer. Now, compared to your hunter jumps, it's very airy. We're using striped poles. We have poles and we have a plank and the course designer will play with, with color and see we have a black plank towards the bottom. It draws the horse's eye down towards the ground. We also have the white flag on the left, the red flag on the right, and the number of the jump is on the bottom right-hand corner. And that will show direction of how the jump should be jumped. Another example of an oxer on a course for jumpers, again, you can see the airiness of it. You can actually see right through the jump. So there's a lot more to um, something for the horse to get distracted by. Same thing, the white flag, the red flag, the number on the bottom right hand corner for this oxer. Third jump. Another oxer, but now you will also see on a jumper course are the use of Liverpools, the blue mat underneath it. That is also an option for the course designer, as well as open water, which can be up to 14 feet wide. This jump on all the jumps in, an, in a jumper course must use the keyhole system. So those are easily um, breakaways so the horse cannot get hung up if, they're, uh, if they come down in the middle of the jump. And then finally we have a vertical on the jumper course. This is actually called a skinny. Most rails on most hunter and jumper courses are 12 feet long. In a jumper course, you can have a skinny, which is only eight feet long. And you can see how airy that jump is. Just three rails. The horse can look uh, right between everything. And there's not as much filler or decoration to back the horse off like we saw in the hunter courses. Now here is an actual jumper course plan. So you see there are no distances provided. So this is why um, the courses can be actually walked for the jumpers. So let's take a look. We have the in gate at the bottom right hand corner and we can take any pattern we want, any course. And usually, again, there's no requirement to start towards the out gate either. So uh, number one, we're looking for our first jump. Usually there'll be at least one change of direction and probably between 10 and 16 jumps. So we have number one 
over on the right hand uh, top right hand corner and then we're going to turn right and do two down to three four left hand turn to five across the diagonal to a triple combination you can have triples or doubles six a b c turn right we have seven down to eight a bit of a broken line down to nine turn right do 10 11 a b and then 12 is our finish line so or the last jump to the finish line there will be a start and a finish line and then we also have a we we're told on the right hand side that that the speed of this course is 375 meters per minute the length of the course is 450 meters the time allowed is 72 seconds and the time limit is just double the time allowed. And if you exceed that time limit, you are eliminated. There is a jump off. It can be immediate. This is not immediate because if we look at the jump off, it's just 6A and B. And we knew there was 6A, B, and C. So let's follow the jump off. It's a new start and finish. And we have a new jump, which is jump number 14. So that is our first jump in the jump off. So we're going to go 14 towards the end gate, turn left and do 5, 6AB, 7, 8, 1, 2, 4. So that is your jumper style course with a lot of information given to you on the diagram. And if you see, as I've mentioned in, in the next film, you are allowed to walk the course. This is where you will decide when the judge has given, or sorry, the course designer has given you some options. Depending on the horse you will ride, um, you may decide to do that line in six, or you might decide to do it in five if it's a bending line. So that's why you're walking the course to decide the best line to take for the, for the track into the jump. And also watching from the out gate when you're next in with your coach is a great way to see if the course is actually riding the way that you walked it. So you can also gain lots of information um, from the out gate. And especially if the rider in the ring before you is BZ Madden. Here's a great picture of BZ Madden at Spruce Meadows uh, riding a lovely chestnut stallion, um, Dairy Lou. And we'll also show you an example of a jumper judge's card. So uh, down the left-hand side, we've got the uh, ring number of the horse. In this point, number 27 was the first horse in. You can see there was one to 10 fences in black and the fences underneath it was the jump off. So there's just check marks uh, for clear over jump. One, two, three, four. We had four faults at number five, and then we were clear on six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, she did not go into the jump off. The time that they completed the course, and there, was a, and there was an error or fault of four. And if we go down to ring number 79, you can see they were clear. And they went into the jump off and did the jump off in 38.19, and they had four faults. And at the top right, we can see that the class was won by number 63. And if we go down and look at the judge's card, they had the clean round and the fastest time. So at this time, we'd like to show you a video of a jumper round, and it'll be BZ Madden uh, from Spruce Meadows. Enjoy. BZ Madden of the United States with Derry Lou, the 11 year old stallion. She won it in 2005. Oh dear. Oh boy. A good wake up rattle at jump number one. That might wake the diesel up a little. By the time we get to the last line, the diesel will be firing, maybe. A little plus <laughs> It's a beautiful chestnut, almost like a copper penny. Diesel's awake now. Those last two jumps were amazing. You know, I love this sport. A woman riding a stallion will go head to head with a man riding a mare. There's a six. And now he's got to push. Push, 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 push. And she regains composure right away to set that horse up for the next step. Nice and smooth. Flying change down early. Now all she has is to deliver him well, and that's all she can do. He has to do the rest. Delivered. Come on, Diesel. Come on. No. 
Look at how he settled beautifully. Oh! One more. One more. Five, six, seven.